Hey everybody, Mike Hess from the COPD Foundation here talking to you today about nebulizers. About a year ago, uh, myself and Dr. David Menino from the Foundation, we did a little webinar called Nebulizers COVID-19 and You, presented by the COPD Foundation Nebulizer Consortium. Uh, now again, remember this was uh, not quite a year into the pandemic. We were just starting to get some of the vaccines on board. We weren't entirely sure what to make of some of the treatments that were out there, like what the risk was with nebulizer therapy and so on and so forth. So we put on this webinar and we wanted to answer some questions. And fortunately, uh, now that we're a year on, we have, uh, we have learned a little bit more about the role of nebulizers uh, in COVID-19 and in the basic treatment of COPD during the pandemic. Uh, now, of course, the biggest question that we find is, is, uh, is nebulizer therapy safe? So the reason we ask that is because of how viruses can be transmitted. We can see the slide from the presentation here where we have somebody who may have a COVID-19 infection who exhales or coughs or so, uh, all that sort of thing. And we get small particles called aerosols that stay up and float in the air and, and for quite some time. And then we get droplets that go down onto surfaces. Now we know these days, COVID-19 is, is very often uh, uh, transmitted by these aerosols. And so what else creates aerosols? nebulizers. It's called aerosol therapy after all. And so our big concern for a long time was can COVID-19 be transmitted by aerosols either escaping from the back end of a nebulizer or as you breathe in and then exhale again, is that going to cause a lot of viral spread? And the answer at this point, due to the, a lot of the research and experimentation from uh, groups like the Nebulizer Consortium and other groups who are participating is, in that, is that the risk in the household setting does seem to be pretty low. Um, we still have some concerns. A lot of my colleagues who are working in the hospital are still very nervous about those, those kinds of, of issues, and we're going to talk about why in just a second here. But the overall message here is that uh, nebulizer safety or nebulizer nebulizers are safe to use in the home setting, generally speaking. Uh, and we can also find some additional ways to reduce the risk of those people around you so that uh, you can alleviate your own concerns, minimize your own concerns about whether you're putting people at risk. One of the things we talk about a lot in risk reduction is this idea of the Swiss cheese model. And this is again another slide uh, courtesy of the University of Queensland that we used in that presentation a year ago, where the idea is if you look at different layers of protection like pieces of Swiss cheese, and you stack them up and the holes don't quite line up, something that gets through that first line of defense may be stopped by another line of defense. So let's take a look at what we've got on the screen here. And that first thing that we see, of course, physical distancing uh, and staying away if you are sick. So if you're demonstrating symptoms of COVID-19, you're probably gonna have people stay away from you and you're going to ask any kind of caregiver, friend, family, relative, whoever it is, uh, to uh, uh, also stay home if they're feeling under the weather with COVID type symptoms. If you are together, even with people who are uh, asymptomatic, don't show any signs or anything like that, you still wanna maintain your distance because we still see COVID can spread even in the absence of any of those symptoms. We also want to encourage people to still wear masks, um, not just for COVID-19, but we've also seen huge reductions in flu and, and other transmissible diseases like that because we're using these same kinds of strategies. So uh, if you're nebulizing, have people around you, even if they're at six feet away, uh, still have them wear a mask for a little while, just again to reduce any of that potential risk there. Make sure you're using your good hand hygiene, washing your hands, not coughing into your hands, uh, coughing uh, into a tissue, or if you don't have anything like that comes on suddenly, do this maneuver, that little maneuver there. Uh, making sure you're uh, using hand sanitizer, washing regularly, all those good things, and keep your hands away from your face as well. Just, uh, I know it can be tempting sometimes, especially with your hand right here, holding the nebulizer, but just try to avoid running your, you know, wiping your nose and all that sort of thing. Again, working in tandem with that good hand hygiene. Uh, if you have a crowded space, you're going to limit your time with that. Again, just making sure that you've got that, that good stuff going on. Now, we move on to this whole idea of what we can do as, as a group, these shared responsibilities. And this is where we start talking about things like uh, fast COVID testing, which is why we get uh, uh, those free COVID tests uh, in the mail these days. 
But the biggest one here, probably one of the biggest ones, certainly, uh, is the idea of ventilation. Uh, if you are nebulizing indoors, probably a good idea to, if you're able to, open a window, get some fans going, stuff like that. Now, it can be easier said than done. Uh, as I'm recording this here in Michigan right now, it's about 22 degrees. A little bit chilly to have that window open and fans running and all that sort of thing. But again, use your best judgment and all, have all of these layers work together uh, to give you the best uh, kind of uh, protection here. Going down a little bit, again, quarantine, isolation, kind of going along with staying home with your sick, keeping away from other people if they're sick. Um, but probably the, the most important thing here is taking advantage of these uh, very safe, very effective vaccines that are available on the market right now. And probably the single most important thing you can do to help stop the spread uh, of COVID. And again, we also have flu vaccines available, pneumonia vaccines available. Make sure that you are up to date on all of those things so that you can keep yourself uh, and your caregiver team, your family members, your friends, your community, all of that safe. So we're all working together on this uh, to make sure that the, the, the nebulization experience is as safe as possible uh, and everything. And we're keeping you breathing well as well. So uh, who is we exactly? Well, we're still running the Nebulizer Consortium, as I mentioned. Uh, this is a great organization, a truly uh, multidisciplinary, multi-engagement uh, group here. Uh, it's really exciting to work with. We've got some representatives from industry, uh, both uh, Nebulizer machine manufacturers and uh, pharmaceutical folks. We've got a whole boatload of clinical and scientific experts from both within the foundation and without. Uh, we've got government and, and uh, medical professional societies on board. Uh, and of course, we have members of the COPD community representing every voice that's at the table right now because it's, all so, it's, it's so important to be working together to making sure that all of this is working as well as, as we possibly can. So I invite you to go to our uh, uh, website at copdfoundation.org to learn more about the Nebulizer Consortium. Uh, and you can also catch the video that we did last year that I mentioned. You can get some of the uh, myth-busting information uh, materials that we've put out there uh, about the safety of aerosol medications in the era of COVID. And you can get all kinds of information and keep an eye on things as we go forward uh, and uh, do that outstanding research, advocacy, and policy work that the consortium has been doing over the last uh, 18 months or so. So with that, I appreciate you watching the video today. Uh, I hope this has put your mind at ease a little bit about your aerosol, neb uh, aerosol slash nebulized medications. Uh, I hope uh, it helps you uh, nebulize a little bit more safely if you have some concerns. Uh, I hope you're taking care of yourselves. I hope you're taking care of each other. And uh, we'll see you next time from the foundation.